As a staff attorney for the ACLU, how concerned are you about the effect that these new laws could have on law-abiding citizens enacting their First Amendment rights? You know, these are quite uh, terrifying times for protests because legislatures across the country are doing their best to try to prohibit people from protesting, despite the fact that what government should be doing is listening to people and trying to understand what their concerns are. Uh, Instead, they're trying to silence them. I I wanted to get sort of really actionable with you, because I think sometimes we look at these pieces of legislation and it's hard to know how they would impact us. So what are some of the legal rights that people should know they have if they are attending a protest? Well, the first thing to remember is that all of us, by virtue of being human beings, have the right to freedom of expression. And the First Amendment guarantees our right to freedom of speech, as well as freedom of assembly. So, you know, you have the right to take to the streets, especially on public property. It's important to know whether you're on public or private property. If you're on private property, the property owner can ask you to move. Uh, But, you know, in the sidewalk, uh, in a park, uh, in those types of public spaces, that's what we call a traditional public forum which since the founding of this country and long before uh, has always been a place where people can come to express themselves, to voice their grievances, uh, and to try to change their world and their country around. We've seen in the past few years the power that filming can have. And so I wonder, are there any limitations on the right to film? Well, you do have the right to film police officers in public in the course of their jobs. Uh, If they ask you to step back, if they say that you're interfering in their work, uh, they can ask you to give them a little bit of space, but you don't have to stop filming. Uh, And what we've seen is that sometimes officers will say, oh, uh, I need you to delete that photo or let me look through those photos. And in that situation, the officer does not have the right to look through your photos. They need a warrant from a judge in order to search your phone. And even if they had a warrant from a judge, they wouldn't have the right to delete those photos. Now, that being said, as you mentioned, you know, we have these rights, but we know that these rights are violated on a regular basis. So, you know, when you're face to face with police officers, especially when it's a protest about the police, there is a special flavor to protests that are about the police because they're heavily armed and they're right across from you. You know, people use their right to protest for issues big and small every day almost without incident. So I don't want to make it sound like yeah, that's important. Protest, things are going to be ha- something terrible is going to happen. I went to a protest with my son's elementary school. No one was in danger. But when you're protesting the police and they're heavily armed and a few feet away, uh, confrontation is much more likely. So you need to be thoughtful about which protest you want to participate in uh, and what your level of risk might be. That said, you do have the right to film. We know that without filming the police, this movement would be nowhere near where it is today. So you do have that right. But whether you choose to push back against the police officer, especially if you're African-American, especially if you're a black man, uh, if you're another person of color or an undocumented person, you really do have to make your own calculation about how much you're going to assert your rights, even though uh, they might be guaranteed by the First Amendment. Uh, When you're face to face with a police officer, you got to make your own decision about how much you're going to sort of push back and stand on principle. What should people know if they're detained by a police officer at a protest? Well, the first thing is if a police officer, they sometimes want to just sort of chat uh, and see if they can get you to say something. So I recommend, you know, if a police officer starts talking to you, uh, say as little as possible. They do have the right in some states to ask you your name, uh, but stay calm, keep your hands visible. Uh, as you see in the graphic. Uh, But the number one thing is you ask if you're free to leave. If the officer says yes, just walk away. That means that you're not under arrest, you're not being detained. If the officer says no, you cannot leave, that means you are under arrest and you have the right to ask for a phone call. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, when you call a lawyer, uh, they cannot listen to your phone call. Uh, But when you call someone else, they are likely to listen in. And even though they're not supposed to listen to lawyers' phone calls, sometimes they do. Uh, So for for younger folks, for people who might be calling their family or their friends to help them if they're arrested, just know that that's not the time to spill the beans and say everything that happened. And just let them know where you are and how they can come help you because it's very likely that the police are still listening in. All right, Emerson, thank you so much for your time. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.